All right, if you have your Bibles, we're in the book of Hosea, the book of Hosea. And this is one of those books that you almost can't believe that it's in the Bible. Uh, if you've never read the book of Hosea, you're going to be shocked by some of the things that we, we look at here. But here we have the prophet Hosea, and God is going to help Hosea understand what it's like to be in a marriage relationship with Israel. Right, if you wonder, you know, you go, but how could Israel be God's people? They're not faithful. They are not righteous. They did this wrong. They did that wrong. Okay, God knows that. So has the entire world. The Bible says, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And in the book of Hosea, God will tell the prophet and say, you want to know what it's like being married to you, Israel? And he says, Hosea, I want you to go marry the adulteress, the prostitute, Gomer. And he'll marry her, and she will step out on him. You know, you wonder, wow, Lord. You know, there's certain people in the Bible you go, man, it'd be kind of cool to be Moses watching the Red Sea part and walking through on dry land and seeing the ten plagues and watching all the miracles, the water flow from the rock, the manna every morning, like frosted flakes coming out of the sky. And you go, I'd love to be Moses, Lord. I want to be Daniel in the lion's den, right? I, I want to wait for God to save me. I want to be David fighting Goliath. Nobody says they want to be Hosea. Nobody wants to be Hosea. But God, that was the plan he had for him. And this is a great book. I encourage you to read the whole book. Two verses I want to highlight. Hosea 1, verse 7. God says here, Yet I will have mercy on the house of Judah. He, he goes through and says, Hosea, Mary, Gomer, the prostitute, this is what it's like being married to you. But God says, Yet, even though they've been unfaithful, I will remain faithful. I will have mercy on the house of Judah. will save them by the Lord their God. But listen, I will not save them by bow. God says, I'm not going to save them by human strength or human mechanisms or human programs or human procedures, but will not save them by bow nor by sword or battle or by horses or horsemen. God says, I will have mercy on them and I will save them, but I'm going to do it. You know, I think we're living in a similar day where God says, I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to do it your way. I think it's time for man to call upon the name of the Lord again. I think it's time for us, like God said to Solomon in 2 Chronicles, he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will they hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. God will do it. We got to turn back to him. And another verse very popular. I share it often. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. This is one of those you may want to put to memory. He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know, if there was a Bible verse that marked the United States of America at its present time, it's that Many people, even those that call themselves Christian and go to church in America, are being destroyed by lack of the knowledge of the Word of God. It's, it's one thing to have the Legos. The Legos, you know, you get the box and it has the picture on the front of what it's supposed to look like. And then you pour out the Legos. And many Christians are pouring out the Legos, the, the verses of the Bible, and they're building whatever they want. But I'm going to tell you something. This book, every verse, it's God-breathed, and it's to be put together the way God intends for it. He intends for it to look like something definitive. And many are building whatever they want from it, and that would be, that's not knowledge. That really isn't. It's information that then is implicated however we want. But God wants real knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And then he says, because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest for me. And it's so important we realize this. We need to study to the word, right? Psalm 1 says, be in the word. Blessed is the man who meditates on the word day and night. So God will have mercy on you. But I encourage you, if you want to enjoy the blessing of the Lord in your life on a, on a daily 
basis, if you want the working of God to be effective in your life, I can't encourage you enough. Read the word, meditate on the scriptures, and do your very best to apply it, to use it on a daily basis. You know, use the word or lose the word, right? Use it or lose it. So put it to practice. Father, I pray you'd bless your people. Bless them. Give them a hunger to know your word. In Jesus' name, amen.